Good morning and welcome back to the Angry Astronaut. So still here in Houston getting ready to visit the Johnson Space Center and lo and behold out in Boca Chica over the weekend things have still been happening. Same old SpaceX catching us off guard and one thing is very certain after this latest development that no matter how much you think you know about what's going on with Starship and everything at Starbase you will find out that you don't know a whole lot at all the very next day after you think you've got it all figured out. So, what exactly happened? Well, S-26 was moved out to the pad, and you may recall in my previous video that I was speculating that S-26, which is an expendable starship, no flaps, no fins, might actually be the first starship to fly to space. And it seems now that there's further evidence to suggest that that may be the case. It's been lifted up onto the suborbital pad for testing, probably pressure tests, maybe a static fire, but it's also important to note that a number of modifications have been made to S-26, which do not exist with S-24 or S-25 for that matter. This includes modifications to the tanks that will help them avoid denting, also modifications to the venting system and modifications to the flight termination system. Why were these modifications made? Well, one would assume to improve the ship. So why would you send your first orbital flight up with a previous outdated and less safe or at least less efficient vessel? It would appear that S-26 is going to be the latest, greatest iteration of Starship, and S-24 and S-25 may be relegated to the scrap heap, or at the very least, retired for less ambitious purposes. And once again, I'm sure lots of people are going to disagree with me on that, but here's the reality. S-26 and S-25 are out at the pad, and S-24 has still yet to be moved from the rocket garden and also does not have all of its heat tiles in place. Nothing has changed with that rocket whatsoever in a considerable period of time now. So it seems to me that we could be on the edge of seeing a new version of Starship, an expendable version of Starship, which again, I think is well suited to the first orbital tests, or at least space-bound tests, suborbital perhaps, that will be taking place here in the near future. S-24 and S-25 may still have a use in the future, but I really doubt that SpaceX is going to carry out their first orbital launch with an outdated ship. But here's the most important factor to keep in mind. It really doesn't matter which of these ships go to orbit. What's important is the fact that SpaceX is demonstrating on a daily basis that they can churn these ships out in the space of a few weeks, which of course is what's going to be necessary if they're going to maintain a decent launch cadence. And this is something, by the way, that ULA is going to have to do as well with Vulcan if they want to stand the slightest chance of carrying out the obligations they have to the Kuiper constellation with Vulcan Centaur. And thus far, ULA has not demonstrated that they're really capable of maintaining anything close to that level of production, whereas SpaceX can turn out a new ship pretty much on demand which means we really shouldn't get attached to any of these ships. If anything happens to any of these vessels that makes them less than ideal for an orbital launch attempt, whether it be some sort of design flaw or perhaps damage that they sustain during a static fire or a pressure test, SpaceX is going to chuck them into the scrap heap and move on to a new ship. That is a far better thing to do than take a risk with a pad RUD. But we'll see. I could be wrong. I was certainly wrong about the space debris situation with Soyuz. It certainly appears now to be a structural fabrication problem with the Russian space program. But I don't think I'm wrong about this one. 
I think that SpaceX is going to be sending their first orbital mission with S-26 and B-9. Stay tuned, and as always, stay angry about space.